Why, hello there. The name's Arabel, and I'm here to tell you a story. But first, before we begin, I'm supposed to tell you a couple important things. I just have to remember what those things were. Let's see here. Don't step on the toadstools. Oh, leave the leafy bargain snails alone if you don't want to lose a finger. Ah, yes, we ask that you keep your tongue quiet and silent during the story, so don't distract from the storyteller. Me. I also ask that you don't record or snap or any such things. Scribes are a rather nosy bunch, and the story is copyrighted by the teller. Also, me. So leave the scribes at home. It's a bunch of cheats and busybodies. Ah, anywho, let us begin. But before we do, let us fold our hands and bow our heads and thank her maker for bringing us here today. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so incredibly much for this beautiful afternoon. Lord, we just ask that your presence be here prominently and strong and that we can feel your heart beating in this room. Lord, we lift this afternoon up to you and we give you the full glory for everything that's within it. Let your peace and your comfort and your guidance be here. In your heavenly name, we pray. Amen. All right, story time it is. Once upon a time. Grandmother, grandmother. D Davina, what's the matter, dear? I'm moving to Switzerland. Darling, you don't want to move to Switzerland. Yes, I do. But in Scotland, we got lovely music, rich culture, and all the plaid you could possibly want. What does Switzerland have? cheese and it's cheese with holes in it so you get less cheese i've never understood grandmother that. yes dear i see you're distressed with what you're coming in here screaming like a banshee and wailing like a gnome you never interrupted my rehearsal for the tale i'm telling to the town folks on monday well the thing is wait wailing like a gnome a comparison you'd understand if you'd ever met one. Gnomes are notorious complainers. Anywho, you come sit down here and you tell me your troubles. Everyone. Everyone is my troubles. Everyone? The whole village. The boys snicker. The girls whisper. The adult dolls stare bluntly. They all know. And it's miserable. They know what, dear? About... Dad. Look into my eyes, Mopey. What happened to your dad was not your dad's fault. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't go blaming him for that. I don't, Gran. And I know you don't either. But everyone else seems to, and now I'm the outcast for it. And I'm worried about Dad. Who knows what they do to prisoners in the palace dungeons? Are they feeding him? Is he being mistreated by the other prisoners? Or the guards? I'm just worried sick. There, there, lovely. No need to get yourself tight in knots. I know you think me odd for saying it, but I think your Dad's in a rather blessed position. Blessed? Grandmother? Why do I ever come to you for advice? <laughs> Beats me. You'll have to look into a mirror to answer that question. All I know is that great men of God in the Bible were a lot like your dad. They did some of their best work and saw some of the most amazing miracles from inside a jail cell. So, looking at your dad's situation, I think he could be in a worse place for God to use him. Hey! You want to hear a story? Do you think now is the right time? I think now is when it'll make you feel better. For I can't tell it to you if you're feeling fine and dandy. Are you feeling fine and dandy today, Davina? You and I both know I'm not. <laughs> then this is the perfect story for you. 
how much do you know about photogenic nycteris? I know that they are the weirdest names I've ever heard. They did have odd names, but they were prisoners too, just like your dad. They were? Ah, yes. And they were in the worst kind of prison too, the kind they didn't even know they were in. Who put them there? A real witch of a woman named Wathel. Do you see her? I don't see anything. We'll try again. But look with your imagination this time. An odd, sinister looking lady, evil and very cunning. Some people say she had a wolf in her mind. Ow! I can see her. Good, good. Now, Watho wasn't a normal witch, while most of her kind relied on magic. Watho had a more of a scientific mind. She liked experiments, and there was something in her that awakened a new curiosity one day. And in able for her experiment to work, she needed some very specific ingredients. So she set off towards the middle of town. Who's back, Frank? That crazy lady who lives in the hills. Watho? <gasps> I can't stand that woman. Such a frightful creature. I have nightmares about her. Hey, look away. Maybe if you don't look at her, she'll leave as soon as she's done. Oh, smart one. You are very clever. Nothing ever good happens when that Watho's about. If she such as tries to talk to me, I swear I'll punch her in the nose. I will. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Shake me, shut up. Oh, no. Frank. I'm staring at her. You seem to be looking for something very specific today, my love. You wouldn't be wrong. What exactly are you looking for? What? I can't help you if you don't tell me, you know. I've just found it, dear husband. And will you tell me what it is? What do you think? Suitable for a baby of the court? They're perfect. Rashawn, I know that face. We've talked about this. Can you blame me for feeling this way? Aurora, this is our first child. Of course I want to be there. Rashawn, the king has chosen you personally for his embassy. A ruler who has been very kind to us and sacrificed much for his people. It's a great honor. Surely you must know that. I do know that. But why now? when I will miss the first days of my child's life. You will not be gone for very long. He or she will still be just as small when you return. Please, promise you'll go. Only if I can find a caretaker for you while I'm away. You're too far along to travel, otherwise I'll have you stay with family. Excuse me, dears. I couldn't help but overhear. Do you need a place to stay while your husband is away? Um, yes. Do you know such a place? Why, I own one. I'm a caretaker for new young mothers. Babies are terribly fragile things, and it's important to have support in this new stage of life. Would you like to come and stay with me? <laughs> um. May we um, tour your home first and meet your servants? I know I would feel a lot more at ease. Of course. It's the castle in the valley just beyond the forest. You can't miss it. Oh, it sounds lovely. Thank you. Uh, what is your name? Watho. Thank you, kind Watho. I'm Rashawn. This is my wife, Aurora. We'll be by in the next couple of days to tour your home. Mm. Well, that's one fish in the net. Now to find another. Anyone care to spare a coin or two for a young blind mother to be? I need to buy food for my child, or else it will starve within me, even as I starve without. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I hear your predicament, young lass. May I ask, where is your husband? His soul passed on to another life, before a child could enter this one, although he was sick for much longer. I'm sorry to hear it. Do you need a place to stay and provision, perhaps? Support as you enter this new stage of life? If you are offering this to me, I have nothing to offer in return. I ask for nothing, dear. I'm a caretaker for new young mothers. That's just what I do. Please, I insist. Well, I don't necessarily hear of people lining up to take me in, so I accept your offer. What was your name again? Watho, dear. Thank you, Watho. My pleasure, dear. My pleasure, indeed. And this is for an experiment. Nothing about that sounds good at all. And it gets stranger yet, I'm afraid. How could it get stranger? Well, you see, when Aurora arrived at the castle, Watho placed her in a lovely room in the highest tower. Aurora would look out over the beautiful hillside and loved watching the sun rise and set every day. What about Vesper? Vesper? To the oddest room I've ever heard of. Deep below the castle in an ancient tomb, with writing and pictures all over the walls. It had been there longer even the castle. Built long, long ago. And this is where Vesper stayed. In a tomb? Yes. But she didn't know it. The tomb was very well ventilated, and she couldn't see to wonder why there was no light here or there. Although, she did wonder why she could never feel a window in her room. And it gets stranger still. How? Well, Aurora and Vesper didn't know about the other being there. Watho kept it a secret from them. They thought they were the only guests in the castle. They didn't know? They didn't have a clue. But they were clothed and fed well and each had a maid to take care of them. So they had no reason to wonder. They were just too busy looking ahead to the beauty that awaited them in motherhood. It was constantly on their hearts and in their minds. They couldn't contain it. With sunshine in your presence, you bring music to my soul. Oh, sweet lovey, who moves and grows within me, there's so much that you should know. I try to find the words to say, words only get in. Something so simple but true I'm in love and I don't even know you In love with 
this hope that I cling to And now I'm watching and waiting Anticipating when you'll come to me And I'll be with you And I can tell you Only about a month later, Aurora gave birth to a beautiful baby boy with hair like the sun. This is where Watho's experiment began. And if you think I'm a crazy lady, just you wait. Falco, my trusted servant, take the child. Ma'am, quickly now, take him as far away from Aurora's room as possible. Yes, ma'am. Stop beating on the way. Yes, that's it. Now, for a really sorry expression. Something pitiful. I'll practice on the way! What happened to Aurora? She was heartbroken. She felt alone. She packed her things, not knowing that her son was just on the other side of the castle and very much alive. Watho's plan was working and it had stolen motherhood from Aurora's grasp. Her husband returned a week later and she left with him. And what about Vesper? She gave birth six months later. The child? A girl, ma'am. 
And the mother? She did not make it, ma'am. You killed her? Falca! And I thought I was the evil one. No, no, ma'am. Her weak health was her folly. She was born into the next life, even as her child was born into the first. Mm, unfortunate for her, but fortunate for my schemes. I have what I need. We can begin the experiment. What are you planning to do, ma'am? Both children will be kept under strict schedules. The boy will only be awake during broad daylight. All things bright and warm will be his dwelling. He will experience no darkness, no shadows. And the girl, darkness will be all she knows. She'll be trained to sleep during the day, to be awake at night, and will never be allowed to leave the tomb. Only a small lamp will be provided for her. Yes. Oh, this is going to be fun. I guess you call it out. Out. If that's out, then who am I? You are where it's called in. Out and in. Foca. Out. space, more space, out is the place where I get to run, out in the rays of the golden sun, carrying this Falca is where fun begins, oh please don't make me go in. Photogen very quickly do, grew too strong for his caretakers. The sun made him bold, brave, and filled with energy. He could not be bridled. Falca informed Watho the growing trouble the child proved to be. Watho agreed that he would soon be too strong for either of them to handle. So she moved the boy out of the castle. What did they do? They sent the boy to go live with Watho's chief huntsman. His name was Fargo. With Fargo, the boy would learn to be an archer, a brilliant hunter, and an incredible horseman. He grew in strength and skill with every passing day. Nictris, the dainty thing, grew as well. However, hers was of growth of knowledge and haunting beauty, with eyes blue and hair as dark as a breezy evening. Because of the dim nature of her room, Nictris had eyes as large as an owl's, Watho had given the girl very little light so she would never learn to read. But Nictis could see far better than Watho imagined, and she coaxed Falca into teaching her the alphabet, with which Nictis managed to read, 
and quite well with children's books that Falco would sneak into her every now and then. Watho came every day to teach the girl music, so Nycteris spent her days in words and melodies and found great joy in both. Falca, why does the lamp glow as it does? Because it does. Falca, you do not know? I do not know. But there must be a reason. I'm sure there is. Falca, why must you answer I don't know to so many things? Because I do, dear. Falca. Yes, dear. Someone, someone, put my bed on the ceiling. That's nice, dear. My nose disappeared and is now growing out of my foot. Do you know how to remedy that? I'll make you some soup. <laughs> With my fellows I hunt all day No toothy maw will stand in our way The thrill of the chase is what I thirst for Oh, what a gift to have more More space More space There's so much more Why don't I know what I'm searching for? Though I am welcome, I do not belong I'll find out why before long More space More space impersonated a frog since I was at least ten. Well, it came from right where you're standing. Here, move aside. What? What on earth? Okay, what was that? I've seen many frogs in my day. That was not one of them. What else is up here? 
things you should leave alone, if you ask me. If you say so, Alice. What'd you find, Elsie? Never seen anything like this before. It smells like cookies. This was amazing. Delectable. Delicious. Uncanny. It smells like a waste of time, if you ask me. <laughs> what if it turns her into a toad? Pity, <laughs> she looked the same as she does now. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, someone's coming! Ladies, good, good morning, morning, Madam Watho. Has Valka been in here recently? No, she hasn't. Would you like me to go look for her? I should hope she's on her way to see Nycteris. That girl grows more curious by the day, and I don't ever want her to be left alone. That's when young things get ideas and dreams. Ooh. I'm so glad those naive days are behind me. Well, if there's anything we can do, you can help room. by serving breakfast on time. And if you see Falca anywhere she's not supposed to be, keep me informed. There might be a raisin it for you. But we don't get paid. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, she's rather peachy this morning. I just feel sorry for her. So do I. No dreams, no family. No life outside of bringing misery to others. She's more agreeable than all of you, if you ask me. Ugh. All right, spill the beans. The what? Walter was just in here looking for you. Is something wrong? I don't know if I can do this anymore. Staying up all night, every night, seeing the same four walls, and trying to sleep during the day. This is madness. What was Walter thinking? She doesn't think, that's why. I've always wondered if maybe Rotha was just someone who longs to be understood, but goes about it all the wrong ways. That's a lovely thought, Myrna, but what I'm afraid what Rotha wants is control. I don't understand it. From what I've heard, her parents were so kind. Maybe it skipped a generation? Could be. Working for Rotha, working for Rotha. Have you heard what's recent about She's growing sumac in her closet. Last week she was dressing cats as villagers. Working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho is quite the adventure. Working for Watho is quite the ordeal. Working for Watho is all of the things I imagine could never be real. Working for Watho, working for Watho. And she barks and she barks and she barks and she cries. Bark, 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 bark. Working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho. Working for Watho is quite the adventure. Working for Watho is quite the ordeal. Working for Watho is all of the things I imagined could never be real. Did you hear her waking up at 3 a.m.? Walking circles and howling at the moon. Or passing Kathy now to all the village bins. And watching all the havoc that is. Last week she was training rats as soldiers and making them fight spiders in a war. Not to mention all the little quirks she has. 
like buying 51 slippers at the store. Working for Watho is quite the adventure. Working for Watho is quite the ordeal. Working for Watho is all of the things I imagined could never be real. Working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho, working for Watho. Ladies, I believe that you have work to do. Enough of all this gossip foolishness. You all know she has ears in every wall. But it's the job of all this training, you know. And the wages are very much more than what is fair. And working with miserable people is not our resume. And training rashes and soldiers is somewhat rare. Working for Watho, working for Watho. Working for Watho is quite the adventure. Working for Watho is quite the ordeal. Working for Watho is all of the things I imagined could never be real. She howls at the moon and she barks and she cries. And there's poison in her closet with the rat she likes to train. And there's caffeine and there's rain and there's children in the tower and the tomb. Working for Wacko, 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 working for Wacko is quite the adventure. Working for Wacko is quite the ordeal. Working for Wacko is all of the things I imagined could never be. Check out Nycteris. See you soon, Falca. Uh-huh. Corona, may I take a short walk in the field? How short do you figure? I'd say about half an hour, but maybe a bit more. Planning a trip to the hunting camp, are you, Elsie? Last I saw, the warmer weather has given Cal the awful legs again. <laughs> do you think, maybe? Most definitely. <laughs> what do you think of Callum, Hilda? I think he's sweet. Yes, but take this basket with you. The boys need their breakfast. Look at that adorable thing. I don't think her legs can carry her any faster. Going to visit Callum is the only time I see her go long distance in a full sprint. <laughs> She's been bit by the bug. I don't blame her. Something nice to help her maintain her sanity in this mess of a place. She should keep her pretty little nose in her work, if you ask me. She's getting too strong, too brave, too curious about the real world. 
He's more like a living thunderbolt than a human being. One of these days, he's going to decide he wants to discover what happens when the sun sets and he'll go out adventuring, and then it'll be my neck on the line. If Otho's current scheme is disturbed, I'll take the blame, no matter how hard I try to stop him. He's more like a living once sooner hold a lion than contain Photogen. I've got to think of something. Got to think. Unless, haha, -ha, I'll go tell her of his growing strength. That's what I'll do. She must listen then. Hopefully. Good morning, Fargo. I brought breakfast. Oh, hello, Elsie. Um, tell them, I mean, the boys are at eight over there. Thank you. Oh, hello, Elsie. Uh, I see you fought the brood. Yes, I, I did what? Oh, oh, you brought the food. Oh, yes. uh, that was very I did. kind of you. Anytime. How's that food look today, Callum? It looks lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. Are we going to get to eat it in the next year or so? Oh, right. Um, I can take this. Have a splendid day. I hope you do as well. Goodbye, Callum. <laughs> How's the hunt today, Callum? Well, that depends. I ask about beasts or women. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's going very well, Photo. And uh, we, we have a new hunter in our midst. Finley, this is Photogen. <clears throat> oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Photogen. I, I... Go on. Oh, uh, Glenn and Rory <laughs> here were just telling me that you have the best hunting stories of the whole bunch. I do. <laughs> Take these. <clears throat> Yes, Photogen, gift us with some mealtime entertainment. You must tell us one of your grand tales. This one. Photogen, tell us a grand old story. Tell us a tale of your hunting glory. What about the antelopes, the foxes, and the dust? Let's go with the ring. Yes, once there was a man-sized boar, razor-sharp tusk-sized bull to the core, and he charged, and he charged, and he cut my side, but I drew out my knife, and I severed his spine.
Tells us the greatest stories. No one can compare with my hunting glory. I hunted all the antelopes, the ten foot bear I trust, or the man sized boar with the razor sharp tusks. <laughs> um, I thought it was a regular sized boar. And I thought you caught the sun. I'm off, my brothers. There is daylight ahead and more beasts to conquer. Uh, I'm sorry I must delay you in your choice for a time, Fotogen, but Watho wishes to see you. Surely not, Fargo. Watho can wait for my return. Um, there's no telling what she'll do to me if you do not arrive on time, so we have to go. I'm not afraid of Watho, Fargo. Well, I am. So for my sake, I'm begging you. Please just go. All right, Fargo. All right. I shall come with you. But stand up, please. I'm afraid for the health of your hunters. Why? Because if they don't get a chance to laugh at your cowardice soon, something will surely burst inside them. Prost. All is well. We have not kept our waiting. Why does Watho terrify you so far, Gu? The real question is, why doesn't she terrify you? Facing down a herd of charging bulls without now left in my quiver would not be enough to send me shaking. And yet, look here. Just the mere thought of Watho sends me shaking like, like Callum on bath day. She gives me that certain look as she's reading my very thoughts. And my heart turns to ash on my chest. What runs through my veins is no longer blood, but milk and water. My goodness, Fargo, have courage, good man. Watho is nothing but the old woman who took me in. She's about as scary as, as you know, Finley is. 
Uh, it's careful what you say about her, lad. She'll be listening at this very moment. Oh. Hello, Watho. <laughs> it's not funny, Photogen. I'm not falling for that Hello. again. <laughs> Hello, my lady. And how are you on this brightest of afternoons? Troubled, dear Photogen. Oh, well, that simply will not do. How may I help with this? Photogen, Fargo no longer wishes to be responsible for you. He believes you are responsible old enough to have responsibility for yourself, along with the uh -huh. consequences associated with failing those responsibilities. Mm. That sounds like a splendid idea. Very good. All right, then, Photogen. Fargo is no longer responsible for your actions. I place on you the one rule I placed on him to ensure. Ah, yes. The rule. I must not be outside once the rim of the sun touches the horizon. Precisely. That is my command. If this command is not met, well... How do you think your targets like being run through with one of your arrows, Photogen? Well, I should say they don't like it much at all. I'm a brilliant shot. Yes. Well, from now on, let their pain be a reminder to you of what will happen if my command goes unheard. Is that clear? Of course. I'm glad to be understood. She has my arrow. It's, it's my favorite arrow. You don't need it. I do need it. You have plenty. Do you remember what happened last time I didn't have that arrow? No. I don't either. What though? Yes, Photogen? <clears throat> May I have my arrow back, please? Of course. Thank you, Otho. The hunt awaits! Well! Thank you, m m my lady. Um, the hunt awaits? <laughs> Someday. I'm going to hide a pair of leafy Borgen snails in that man's slippers. Again! Did Waffle's plan work? It might have, but... God had a different plan for Photogen and Icterus than they even know. You see, ever since Photogen had been placed under Fargo's care, Watho had begun to get lazy. Because of that, it was more and more often that Falca would go off to bed while Nycteris was still awake and leave the pale creature by her lonesome. On one such night, as Nycteris was humming to herself and watching her beloved lamp, an earthquake shook the tomb. And then the humble prince asked her to dance, and so they did. <sighs> oh, my lamp, I wish I could go dancing. I didn't know what it was, you know, but I asked Falca, and she said it was something like this. <laughs> Would you dance with me, my lamp? What is happening? Hello, my lamp, are you there? How oh, odd, it is as though my eyes are shut and my hands over them, though I know it is not so. Oh no, my lamp, what has happened? That rumbling, it must have been the darkness come to murder you, jealous of your beautiful light. Its rumbling anger swooped in before I could save you. Oh, how very dark it is. But if the darkness came to bring your end, then could the culprit still be present? Lamp, lamp, my lovely lamp has died. Where does the attacker hide? Out, out, should I go in? 
No. I must leave to be safe. I can no longer be in, but how do I get out? I've never tried before. Get out. Go out. My lamp, I remember. Falk has mentioned before about you going out. That must be what has happened. You did not die. You ran away. But where did you go? And how may I get there also? Falka and Watho always came through this wall. How, I could never tell. <sighs> what was that? Oh, my lamp, you have been killed after all. But you have not gone out as Falka has said. Only your shine is no longer present. You must be somewhere in the other place in the wall. Find my lamp. Uh, must you repel me with your infuriating hardness? Followed the fire. Followed the firefly, which she assumed to be her lamp, down a dark hallway. The firefly then began drifting upward, and Nyctris found herself on a flight of stairs. She had never experienced going up before. So she found it the oddest sensation. When she reached the top, the firefly disappeared. She was in utter darkness once more. Where did it go? She didn't know, dearie. But when we are following the light, even its extinction is a guide. If the firefly had gone on shining, Nyctris would have seen the stairs turn. It would have gone up to Watho's bedroom, which would have left her in a dreadful heap of trouble. Whereas now, feeling straight before her, she came to a latched door. After a good deal of trying, she managed to open it and stood in a maze of wonder, awe, and delight. What was it? It was out, dearie. It is my lamp. No, it is not my lamp. It is the mother of all the lamps.
They must not know that I know. I must hoard this splendor within me. What a fool my keepers have made of me. Life is a mighty bliss, and they have scraped mine to the bare bone. And now, because of them, I must hide this knowledge, even from my own eyes. I will keep it close, content to know that I have it, even though I cannot be in its splendor or feast my eyes on its glory. After Falca found the lamp broken, it gave her quite a scare, and it was a good while until she left Nictris alone again. A new lamp replaced the old one, and that was that. But one night, as Nictris lay in bed pretending to be asleep, Falca left once more, and Nictris got her chance. My lamp! You are gone! Have you fallen? All of your tiny companions are still here. Unless all of these tiny lamps eventually grow into big lamps. And then they depart to another out as even bigger lamps, leaving room for a smaller lamp to grow up and take their place. Does that make sense to any of you? My unseen friends, you have returned. How are you today? You have left so soon? How delicious a scent is this. It must be coming from the place of lovely things below this strange room, with all its shapes and colors and beauties and its sound. How did I not notice before? What music it is coming from those rushing blue creatures marching out in a long, lovely file. Why are they in such a hurry to go? Everything here in the out seems to be coming and going at such a fast rate. They must be going to where the new lamp is. Uh, why won't someone hang a new lamp so that I do not have to be alone with the creatures leaving me behind? Soon I will be alone. endless to describe the phases of feelings through which Nictris passed, more numerous and delicate than those of a thousand changing moons. She decided that the moon was a living thing, and captive just as herself. She visited it whenever Falca left her alone. She no longer thought that the old lamps died and new ones came. She thought that, much like herself, this was the same lamp coming and going, sharing its light whenever it could escape from its captors. One night, However, she found things very different than before. My invisible friends, why are you angry? My lamp, why are all of your children fighting with one another? Even the water serpents down below are angry. I have often wondered if Watho kills those serpents and brings them inside for me to drink. Is that why they're angry? No, you angry ones, do not hurt my lamp or take it away from me. Oh, my lamp, do not cry. Please do not cry. Why do your children betray and smother you so? I'll be back for you soon. I promise. What happened to Fort Odin? Well, as you can probably guess, Fort Hagen was about to get himself into trouble.
perfect, awake before all the others. Can't wait to see their faces when I... What is that? Never seen such a creature. Get out of my way. Wait, what would Fargo do? Right. Get out of my way, Finley. Charge! the other hunters see me return with such a fierce and unusual prize. What a delightful day this will be. Where have you gone? What a cowardly beast hiding from me are you, you toothy creature. What animal was that, Fargo? How he did run. Could have been a, a leopard. I'd say from its pace, it was probably a young lion. I'd say from your pace, you're not quite young anymore, but uh, he was certainly afraid, Fargo. Don't be too sure. It's one of the creatures that the sun makes uncomfortable. As soon as the sun sets and night comes, it'll be brave enough, you'll see. So that contemptible beast was one of the terrors of sundown of which Madame Watho spoke? Very intriguing. <clears throat> Photogen! Hey. Uh, why don't we go and get some breakfast before the other hunters arise, you know? Hmm? Some up roast for tonight. Mm -hmm -hmm. I mean, morning a bit. You go ahead. I lost an arrow in this field yesterday, and I intend to find it. And it might take me a while because I don't know where it is. Uh, uh, all right, no, more up rolls for me then. Yeah. Save, save some from me. Don't yeah, don't worry, I'll make yeah. sure Finley doesn't need all. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Why do I feel like there's so much more? Why don't I know what I'm searching for? This life that I'm living just doesn't feel right. Lion, I'll be back for you tonight. But first, breakfast. Finally. I can't believe they believe that. Naive children they are. <clears throat> Photogen, have you finished your dinner yet, you lazy rump roast? I have, dear Fargo, and what a lovely compliment because I happen to like rump roast very much. It helps me keep my figure. Don't let Madame Watho hear you say that or she might just turn you into a rump roast. Also, listen very carefully. Let's not say Rumprost anymore. Very well, Fargo, very well. And oh, I say, Fargo, all this hunting today has made me so tired. I looked and looked for my arrow, and then I had to kick some squirrels out of a tree so I could be there instead. And oh, I mean, that's fine, Photogen. You should get some rest. Just don't go chasing after that lion. Me? I would never do something like that, I promise. And now, we shall see. Where's the sun gone? 
What is this horror that has overcome the world? Strumming in my chest and shaking in my bones. Surely I must be dying. <gasps> My white squirrels! Hopefully the river will separate me from those monsters. What are you? You frightening ugly thing. An evil brother to the son I so love. And who am I? A man who has enough strength and courage to be a coward. Oh, all my strength has been taken from me. And I think I might more than that. No, no, it can't be. They locked me out. Another way. I know there's another way in. I've heard it before when Falca enters. Her footsteps come from this direction instead of this direction. Another doorway. Wathos sleeves seem to be full of tricks now, don't they? It's so dark now, I can feel it. Hello. My lamp, are you there? It would be lovely to have you here to help me see. A, a door, and it's... Oh my, it's magnificent.
so soft and so sweet and they talk with their colors and speak with their sense what can this mean such beautiful things wait are those trees As a matter of fact, she did. Well, this is the strangest looking girl I've ever seen. Please, don't be dead. You must wake up, darling, you must. Who are you? I'm Nycteris. You are a creature of the dark and love the night. I may be a creature of the darkness. I hardly know what you mean. But I do not love the night. I love the day with all my heart. And I sleep all the night long. How can that be when I see your eyes now wide awake? Hmm? <laughs> you say such strange things. Was it just a dream then? Oh, horrible, horrible to be turned all at once into a coward. A shameful, disgraceful coward. I'm ashamed. Ashamed and so frightened is also frightening. What is so frightening? Everything, all the darkness and the roaring. My dear, there is no roaring. How sensitive you must be. What you hear is the water taking a stroll and the running about of the sweetest of all creatures. She's invisible and I call her everywhere for she goes through all the other creatures and comforts them. Right. Have you by any chance been bitten by a leafy bargain snail recently? I don't think so. That's good. And now look, she's amusing herself and them by shaking them and kissing them and blowing on their faces like this. Do you call that roaring? No. You should see her when she gets angry, though. I don't know why, but she does sometimes. And then she does, does roar a little. Why must this darkness be so dark? Dark? You should have seen my room when an earthquake killed my lamp. I don't see how you can even call this dark. Let me see. Mm. Yes, you definitely have eyes. Mm -hmm. Big ones at that, bigger than Waffles, Miss Falcas. They're not as big as mine, I imagine. Except I've never seen mine before. Oh, now I know what is the matter. You cannot see with them because they are so black. Darkness can't see, of course. Naturally. Never mind. I will be your eyes and teach you to see. 
Look here at those lovely white things in the grass with the red points all folded into one. I love them so. I could sit looking at them all day, the darlings. They are beautiful. You call it dark. Why, I could count every blade of green hair for two yards. Well, now that I think of it, this must be what my books call grass. And just look at the great lamp. She is especially bright tonight. So I do not see how you can be frightened or call it dark. There, there now. No need for fright. How did you come here? Down the hill. Where do you sleep? In the castle. Oh, wonderful! That is where I live as well. When you have learned not to be frightened, you will always be wanting to come out with me. Mm-hmm. Come, come now. You must not go on this way. You must be a brave girl and face your... A girl? If you were a man, I should kill you. A man? What is that? We are both girls, are we no, not? No, we're not! <laughs> Although, I have given you too good a reason to call me one. Oh, I see! You cannot be a girl. Girls are not afraid without reason. <laughs> is it because you are not a girl that you are so frightened? No, it is not. It is this darkness that creeps into me goes all through me into the very marrow of my bones. That is why I behave like a girl. <laughs> I wish the sun would return. The sun? What is that? What is that? All right. <clears throat> it is the heart, the soul, the life, and the glory of the universe. The world's dance in his beams, and the heart of man is brave and strong in his light. And when his light goes, his strength goes with it, and he becomes such as you see me now. Then that is not the sun? That? I know nothing of that other than it is ugly and horrible. At best, it could only be the ghost of a dead sun. No, no, I think you must be wrong there. I think that the sun is the ghost of a dead moon. And that is how he is so much more splendid, as you say. Is there another room, then, where the sun lives in the roof? Uh, I don't know. But I do know that you wish to be kind Although you should not call a poor fellow in the dark a girl, even if you act like it. But if you wouldn't mind, I should like to get some sleep. And I doubt I'll be brave enough to do so if I'm alone. Will you stay here and watch over me? Yes, that I will.
The moon. My dear lamp, you have grown so deathly pale. The world has become so much brighter, even as you grow dim. Why do you sacrifice yourself in such a way? I'm terrified, great lamp. But at least I am not alone. I wish I knew what to call you. I know now that I can't call you a girl. You grew too angry when I called you what Watho calls me. You look very different in this light. Your cheeks are growing rosy, and your hair is bright and filled with color. Not to mention, you look much different in peaceful sleep, without that crinkliness between your eyebrows you had when you were awake. The trinkets you carry are all so strange. I'm sure I've seen some of them in the paintings on my wall before. No, the moon, you must come back. The sun will mean my death. It hurts. Aha, the sun has returned. Please, you must help me. I don't like the sun. I don't like it at all. If I remain here, I may grow blind or even die. I do not wish to die yet. I wish my old lamp to return and take this pain from me. What's the matter with you, girl? There's no fear in anything now. It is day. Look, the sun shall soon rise fully and bless us with its warmth. Not to worry. <laughs> no, please, you don't understand. You must help me get back to the castle. You don't understand. I'm going to be late for breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for my night's lodging. Goodbye. I'll be off. Don't be a goose. If ever I can do anything and all that, you know. <laughs> no, please, you mustn't leave me. I'm not accustomed to the sun's cruel rays. Remaining here will mean my death. Hello? Hello? If I stay here, I will burn up like sitting alone in a furnace. I hope I never see that awful, awful girl ever, ever again. Ever. I've seen hunters sleep lighter than that, and that's saying something. All we should be talking about is work, if you ask me. Whatever else. A ghost? not a ghost, Elsie. It's Photogen. He goes by my room in order to leave the castle, and I've heard him go past every night just after sundown. Has that poor boy lost his mind? Did the poor boy ever have his mind? I think Watho's done a rather good job of losing it for him. But why would he be out there? He probably ran into Nycteris on one of her moonlight escapades, if you ask me. Oh, Alice, I did ask you that time, didn't I? Hmm. It was bound to happen eventually. I hope he didn't run into Nycteris. Watha would be so cross if she knew they were both disobeying her orders. Dare I say it? Those two probably wouldn't even survive that lecture. <laughs> we've all seen Watha angry, but I, I know we've never seen her at her worst. If caught at the wrong time, 
dare say that woman would be capable of any number of horrible acts. No, ladies, that is why we mustn't speak of such things anymore. Falco told me that Nectaris has fallen ill and has been stuck in bed all week with not much improvement. If we wish to see that darling girl again, we must focus on our energies and praying her through and keep these dangerous tidbits to ourselves. Agreed? Yes, yes Rona. Rona. God must surely be watching over those two poor souls. If Watha wasn't so disoriented during all this, she would have found out about their growing rebellion for certain. I'm concerned for the coming days. May those poor things be free of Watho's treachery soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ladies, the hunters are ready for their lunch. Elsie, would you like to bring their boys their lunch today? Say hello to Cal, of course, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of you to send Elsie, Rona. But you'll most likely be missing a maid for an hour or two now. The way she and Callum can talk. We win a tournament if there were such a thing. Let that girl, she's had a rough week. Let that girl share her lunch with her bow. How's Nectaris faring? No better than Photogen. He fell ill just last night. I wonder why that could be. None of us would know since we're just maids. It's all right, girls. I've had my own suspicions. I don't want Watho finding out any more than you do. Can you do anything about it? Well, now that you mention it, I think I can. She is, dear. This is all my fault. No, no, it is not your fault. There are many, many reasons that that woman is the hateful thing she is. Reasons you do not know. For example, there's been a man wandering her gardens every night this week, crying out loudly and exclaiming apologies to some river nymph that he abandoned there several nights ago. There has? You do know what a man is, don't you? Not exactly. Here, I brought you a new book. It might help. It's a love story about a girl who spent most of her life locked away. A girl very much like you. Thank you, Falca. You do know how, in the children's books I brought you, there are boys and girls? Yes. Well, a man is a boy who has grown up, just as a woman is a girl who has grown up. And what is a husband and a wife? Well, when a man and a woman go in love for each other and desire for the other to be happy, even more so than themselves, then the man will ask the woman to be married, and they'll have a big celebration called a wedding. And then they live together and grow together and live happily ever after. That's beautiful. Falca? Yes, dear? Do you think I will ever find myself in a life filled with such beauty? I do not know. But I do know that the man who was in the gardens this week was very much in love with the woman that he sought. I do not know how he hurt her, but I have never seen a man more ashamed than that. He probably deserved it. What? Nothing. Here, I brought you this. Watha didn't want you to have lunch, but here. 
You're a dear, wonderful friend, Falca. Thank you. I'll be back as soon as I can get away. Once upon a time. was a warrior, and even though I've never met Nycteris, from what I hear, she's strong. I know. So is Lachlan. Lachlan's better than me, but I saw her in the hallway on my way here. She was weak, but very determined, and she has not been cruel to Bo Green or to his wife. They'll both stick out to this town. I just wish there was something we could do. Darling, I know time is terrifying right now. The future is uncertain, and Fargo has been going mad all morning, but I stand by my word. They'll be fine. Have faith. You must allow yourself a little hope, yes? <laughs> yes? Yes. Good. Now, can we forget our troubles long enough to eat a little lunch? My lady must keep up her strength if she's going to be a mighty maid of Watho. I will gladly do so, Colonel. Good. Gather the other hunters, go into town. For what, Fargo? Anything, anything, just get out of here. Was that Fortigen? We're not leaving our friend behind, Fargo. Elsie, go inside. Rona sent for you. You must be mad if you think that I'm going to let her go in there with that insane woman. I have taken measures, but you must let her do her part by joining the other ladies. We need to go with Have faith. Ha-ha! If anything happens to her, Fargo, it's on your head. Same goes for Fortigen. I'm no lads, but I'm trying, but you got to get out of here. Promise you'll still do what it takes to defend everyone if the situation rises. We won't leave until you at least do that. I promise, lads, but I'm trying, and you need to go now. We will go. Go protect us. <laughs> What was wrong with Photogen? Watho developed a burning anger towards Photogen and Nycteris. She hated them, so she decided to make their lives miserable. But it turned out to be a good thing. How can that be a good thing? There's no way that could be good. Well, it wasn't good at the time, but God, he had a plan. Thank you. 
say you love me, look up and see I hate you. Look back down at the ground. Keep your head down. You don't like it? No, no, I don't. It's a sad, terrible, depressing story about two lives that have been ruined since birth. And now they're being tortured. You don't even want to hear how it ends? No, how could it possibly get better from here? I don't want to hear anymore. All right. But if you don't mind me saying so, if you were in one of my stories, you'd make a downright predictable character. What do you mean? What I mean is, you're just like many people I know and have known. You enjoy life humming and strolling along until life offers you something that you don't like. And then you give away every possibility of blessing and you just end it. You end it right in the middle of the worst part. That's not what I'm doing, Gran. Oh, is it now? I've seen too much of that these days, lovely. One beautiful individual after another reaching the darkest parts of their story. And instead of letting the author finish his joyful ending, you give it the worst ending possible. You don't even get to find out the blessing that was waiting for you if you would have waited just a little longer. Now, Davina, is that how you want to end this story? Or do you want to let the author finish and bless you for it? Well, if you think it will help, we can continue.
in you. We certainly can. Now, Watho is twirling the newly bloodied arrow in her fingers. I told you what would happen to you if you disobeyed me, Photogen. Hopefully, this is a punishment that will remain in your memory. It. I must not remain here any longer. As soon as night falls, I will escape this terrible prison. It will happen tonight. I only wish I knew what had become of my river nymph. I was so frightened last I saw her that I don't even remember her name. How awful I was to her. She seemed to know nothing of the day just as I knew nothing of the night. She had spent her entire life in the darkness as I, the light. Of course, the sun would harm her delicate skin. She was burning alive out there. And I left her there. She could be dead now. And now... Now I don't know what to do. I'm dying, and Valka says he loves me, and I might never see him again. I might never see anyone again. Son, why do you rule this world with such anger and cruelty? My friends, I have never seen you looking so happy before. You have been out here for a long time, and the sun has not harmed you. In fact, you seem to like it. So perhaps the sun does not mean to ha harm me either. I just hurt because I'm not accustomed to it. The day is not so awful after all.
So that night, as soon as Fotogen thought everyone was asleep, he escaped. However, he only made it as far as the garden. He had lost a fair amount of blood, and the lack of sleep and food on top of that made him very weak. As soon as he reached the bottom of the hill, he fainted. And Nicholas, she spent the rest of the day lying on the ground, pretending she was be to be passed out, so Watho wouldn't come and check on her. But as soon as night fell, she regained some of her energy, and she went to the garden as well. To see Photogen? You guessed it. And who should she find when she got there, positioned exactly as he had been the first time she found him? But Photogen himself, sprawled out on the ground by the river like a poppy ward. Oh, my darling, what has Watho done to you? Your face. Oh. Hello again, not a girl. My name is Photogen. And I hate to say it, but I was so frightened last I saw you, I forgot your name. I'm Nycteris. Nycteris. Thank you. For what? For before, you were like live armor to my heart. You kept the fear off me. And I was so terrible to you. Please forgive me, dear lady. I've been very ill since then. Did you come up out of the river when you saw me cross? <laughs> I don't live in the river. I'm a prisoner of that castle just as you are. I live under the pale lamp and I die under the bright one. Oh, I understand now not have behaved as I did had I only understood. But I thought you were mocking me, and I am so made that I cannot help but be frightened at the darkness. Now, now I believe you were really frightened, were you not? Yes, and I shall be again. I wish you could love the darkness as I do. It's so soft and quiet, so sweet and velvety. It holds you close and loves you as you are. Not that long ago, I lay faint and dying under your hot lamp. What did you call it? The sun. Oh, I wish it would return. No, please, don't hurry him, for my sake. I can take care of you in the, in the dark, but I have no one to care for me in the day. My torture only ended earlier today, when I opened my eyes and your bright lamp had fallen behind the trees. My terrible headache left, my eyesight returned, I felt made new. I waited until darkness had come fully, and then the grass grew so cool about me. Something wet came upon the ground that was so pleasant to my feet. So I rose and I ran, I ran and ran in the glory of the night until I found you here. So I sat down beside you to take care of you until your life and my death should come again. Why, how good you are, you beautiful creature. You forgave me before I ever asked you. He told her what he knew of his story, and she told him what she knew of hers. They both agreed that they must get away from Watho as soon as possible, and as far away as they could. We must leave immediately. Agreed. As soon as the sun returns. No, we must not wait for the morning. I will be in too much pain to make the journey. And then what would you do if I am, un if I am unable to take care of you the next night? Besides, Watho sees best in the daylight. You must come now, Photogen, you must! I cannot, I dare not, I cannot even move. If I so much as lift my head from your lap, the very sickness of terror overcomes me. I shall be with you. I will take care of you until your dreadful sun comes. And then you may leave me and go on as fast as you can. Only please put me in a dark place first, if there is one to be found. Never leave you again, Nectaris. Only, please, wait till the sun returns. And then we will go away and never, ever part anymore. My darling, you must learn to be strong in the dark as well as in the day. 
Otherwise, you will only ever be half brave. I have begun my own journey already. Not to fight with your son, but to make peace with him. To understand who he is and what he means with me. Whether to harm me or to make the best of me. You must do the same with my darkness. They are dangerous creatures in the forest, my love. They have green eyes. And they would eat you up like a bit of celery. <sighs> you exasperating man. Come, or I shall have to pretend to leave you in order to make you come. I have seen the beasts that you speak of, and I will protect you from them. You will protect me? How? You have no weaponry. But I have eyes. Very good ones. I will see the beasts long before they see us, and lead you away from them. I see your beautiful eyes. Please don't take them away from me. Shall I not? They are about all I can see because of this darkness. I believe they are windows into the very heaven beyond the sky, and that they are the place where the stars are made. Then come, or I shall close them. I am afraid, but I will try. Come, lean on me. Photogen. They keep giving me ones without arrowheads on the end. <laughs> then Fargo's trying to play a joke on me. English arrows. Oh, yes. Despite getting some rest, Fortagen was still very weak from his injury. Nycteris was stronger than she appeared, and she helped him along. She was exceeding, he was exceedingly grateful for her presence. And did she save them from the beasts? Just as she said. She could see them coming long before they even knew she was there, and she dodged them perfectly. She didn't even tell Fortagen when she saw them. Instead, she spoke to him softly of flowers, the sweet smell of the trees, and the soft grass under their feet. So that he would be more afraid than he already was? Right you are. Now, by the time they reached the field, a large plot of land where Watho's property gave way to the forest on the other side. They were both as weary as could be, and morning was arriving. But there was much walking to go. The only thing keeping them upright was their ability to lean on each other. They reached the middle of the field, and as if one being, they both stopped. I, I can't. I can't do it, darling. I can't take another step. Morning is coming, my love. Let us rest a moment. Sit down. I do not wish it to come. It pains me so. Yet it is coming either way. You must be brave. Brace yourself, dear lady. Take my clock. Up. 
You must leave me here, Photogen. We are both too weak, and I am weaker in the daylight. Do as you promised me. Go on without me. Then you'll be safe. I promise no such thing. Hold this. Come now. As the light grows, so does my strength. Rest easy, Hector is my love. She'll never leave you again. Nicturus, I'm going to have to ask you to forgive me if I get blood on your dress. I will always forgive you, my love.
Not as badly as yesterday. The cloak helps, but it still hurts. I know, darling. I know. We'll soon be to the forest, and then we can walk in shade the rest of the way until... Votogen, there's a wolf! I have to set you down. Here, take this. Here, my bow. And me arrows. I'm not going anywhere. I believe you. With these English arrows. I should have Why? remembered my knife. I know, Fargo gives Why me the bunch. English arrows? Wish this one luck. <sighs> Must not have wished it luck. Give me another one. That one bounced off. Photogen, there's blood on that one. All right, Watho stab me with this one. Long story, remind me to tell you, if we don't get eaten... It's not a wolf, darling. It's... Oh, no. It's Watho. Are you all right? Come quickly. We need to find Fargo. Earth is the meaning of these errors, Far. They don't have ends on. Don't, don't look at me. I didn't buy them. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, right. It's a long story. And I thought it was a wolf from a distance. There's Madame Watho's body. I've shot her. I, I will go and bury my mistress. After that, I must bring you before the king. You can tell him your story then. No. No? You may bury Watho, Fargo, but I'm not leaving this property until I make this lady my wife. Victress? Horodin. And then the king himself cannot part us. If ever two people could not live one without the other, it is you and I. You must teach me to be a brave man in the dark, and I will look after you until you can bear the heat of the sun. All right, you shall be married as soon as I return. I'm glad some, some joyfulness came out of Watho's treachery. I don't think a better match could have ever been made, if you ask me. For once, Alice, I absolutely agree. Well, Photo, shall we go? Go where? Have you seen yourself? We're getting new arrows, right? Yeah, we can, we can pick them up on the way, but we need to get you cleaned up. You look like you slept on the ground. I did. That's not okay, the worst. I did too. <laughs> that's not the worst thing that's happened. And we can get Nictris ready, right, ladies? Mm -hmm. I will see you later, my love. And then we will be man and wife. Goodbye, darling.
to Jenny Nictris were married that very day. They'd never been so joyful. Wathel was gone. They were free. I see Moppy is back again. You mind telling me why? Well, is that the end of the story? Not quite. I have a question. All right, off you go. I'll wait. Finish this story first, then I'll ask it. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right. Now, where was I? Right. And then they went to meet the king. Are you certain? I understand. Send them in. What is it? You look so solemn all of a sudden. I sense that a great many mysteries are about to come to light. Your servant presents to you Fortigen, Nectris, and Varku, your majesty, from the castle of Madame Watho. Silence. You may rise. I will hear your tale. The king listened to their stories with great interest and compassion. They told him the entire tale from top to bottom and babbled on almost as much as their merfolk in Lake Diggory. Wait, the what in Lake Diggory? Never mind that. The point is, for the first time in their lives, they lived every tragic fact, every sorrowful tale, and every frustration on the table. And they were heard. This is something Fortigen and Nictris had never been. Overjoyed, yes. Broken hearted, certainly. But heard, no. That is something Fortigen and Nictris had never experienced. And they sucked it up like a couple of slugs in a garden. Yes. Moving on. What happened after they told their story? Ah. Well, despite the dark tragedy, tragedy, oh, my goodness, my tongue is in a knot today. <laughs> so, well, despite the dark tragedy of it all, the, the joyful ending of their story gave everyone in the room great hope. And besides that, there are some very important people present, two of them to be exact who'd been waiting 16 years for this very moment. And that is why we have come. Aurora, Roshan, come forward. I believe that standing before us today is someone you have been missing for a very long time, your son. Could it be true? God above, could it be true? Dearest, I'm afraid I've made a terrible mistake. I, I believed in Watho's treachery, and my heart is breaking and rejoicing all at once. Darling, could you ever find it within yourself to forgive me? We both fell to realize, Photogen. My son, I'm so very sorry. Why, there is no question. Of course I forgive you. Oh, I have so many hunting stories to tell both of you. Nicholas, I'm sure you must be wondering about your own heritage. I am sorry to say that your story is not as happy as you might hope. I wish to hear it just the same, if you don't mind. Very well. Your father died long ago. I, I know not how. Your mother I did meet just once. 
She was lovely, just as you are. She was blind, but yet could see adoring love for you before she had ever met you. And then? And then she died shortly after giving birth to you. I'm sorry, lass, I wish it were not so, but I thought you'd want to know the truth. Thank you, Fargo. But she is not entirely alone, is she, Fargo? No, my lady. No, she is not. My dear, I do not wish to impose or assume any way of thought, but I would be honored and delighted if you would consider yourself my daughter. I, I know it's sudden, you don't know me very, but... <laughs> Certainly, but for the most part, it's inconsistent, messy, and tragic in the best way. Was that the question you had before? Yes, but tragic in the best way? That doesn't work, Gran. But it does, my dear. The Bible tells us that God's plan for us is always good. Sometimes it just takes a little struggle to get there. Like Photogen and Nicholas? <laughs> Just like them. And you know what I love about this story. I have a feeling you'll tell me either way. You bet. Now, was it Aurora and Rashan's fault for what happened to Photogen? No, they were just trying to be good parents. And when Photogen was separated from them, did they stop loving him? No, they loved him all the more when he came back to them. Exactly. And that's what God does with us. I know in this season of time, you might feel tempted to feel anger towards God. You might want to yell and shout in your prayers. And that's okay. Because 
He loves you. No matter how you come to him, he loves you. Can we pray for my dad? <laughs> Always. Well, Jacob, that's incredibly rude. Can't you see we're talking with the Lord? All right, finish your praying. But then you must come. They're about to start Broden's trial. Did you find anything else, Jacob? Would you like to talk in private, Arabel? Nonsense. Davina has just as much ear to, ear to hear as I do. All right. They've had one or two witnesses step forward, but there's no telling if the trial will do any good. I'm sorry, I wish I had better news. That news is good enough for me. That means he's got a chance. We'll meet you outside, Jacob. All right, then. We can pray on the way to town, right? Aye. Are you ready? I know God has a plan, and I'm ready to face it, even though it might not be what I want. Because? Because he is more than capable of using the lightest and the darkest parts of our stories and making it all good in the end. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm still scared and worried and a whole world of other feelings right now, though. And that's okay. As long you as you leave those emotions in the hands of God at the end of the day. Thank you, Grandmother. For what, dearie? Letting me move to Switzerland. <laughs> Anytime. Mopey. Now, let's go see your dad. want to yeah my mic is on hi I just want to thank you so much for coming out today and seeing this show we had so much fun putting it together for you over the past few months um, this show meant so much to us because uh, over the past seven years or so that tag has been a ministry we have seen about every struggle that anyone could possibly go through enter our doors teenagers dealing with um, suicide depression anxiety eating disorders Anything you could name, we've probably seen it. And the fact that we can come to God with those problems and we can lay them at his feet and know that he will carry them for us and bring a good ending in the end, no matter what, is hugely comforting to all of us. And so I just want to uh, encourage you that no matter what each of you are going through, we've been praying for our audiences all week and you have already been prayed over, and I don't know what each of you are coming in these doors, what struggles you've carried in with you, but we hope that you found encouragement with this show today, and that you can know that God is carrying whatever burdens you have on your plate, and that he can bring it to a good ending, no matter what. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, we hope you have a great evening. God bless.